Yo, Keep It Sky here. Hey, so I'm gonna invite you guys to have an open conversation with me. So feel free to leave your comments down below. Leave me your opinion on this because I'm about to give you mine. So I think the home theater hobby may be in trouble. And the reason is everybody has a smart TV at home or a projector with smart apps inside. So YouTube, Hulu, Disney Plus, Zeus, uh, Peacock, we got free TV, Tubi. There's so many different ways for you to consume content right at the couch at the press of a button. And that's great. But the reason why we get a home theater system is one or two reasons. One, either to stay home and have the movie theater feeling at home, or because maybe you want a better sounding or visual experience than what you can get at your local movie theater, or both, right? For me, I have a home theater because I think mine sounds a lot better than the one down the street. It looks a lot better than the one down the street, and I don't have to go down the street. I can just stay home and go to my dedicated home theater, watch whatever I want to. Now, I consume my movies through physical media, but I watch all my other TV shows and you know Netflix, whatever, I, I do consume streaming apps. When I want to watch a dedicated movie, something that just came out, I will buy a physical disc and put it in my physical Blu-ray player and I will watch it. Those things are going away, just like CDs, now we have DVDs, they're going away. 4K Blu-rays, they're hard to find. You can't really walk into a store anymore and find the exact movie you want. It's just not there anymore because now you have Hulu giving it to you three weeks after it aired at the movie theater or some apps are giving it to you while it's live in theaters. So it's hard now. So here's why I think the home theater hobby is in trouble or the home theater in general may be in trouble. Number one are the streaming services. So everybody has a smart TV or something that provides you a multitude of apps. Apps don't have the best video quality. They don't have the best audio quality. And even to get their best out of them, you have to have the best Wi-Fi, right? So you have to pay for a certain speed so that you get you know, enough bandwidth to be able to get the high fidelity audio and get the, the video to go with it. Not a lot of people are gonna buy the highest Wi-Fi. They're gonna get enough so that they can have their phones, a laptop going, the kids have their tablet and they're good. Maybe that's good for that, but it's not strong enough or fast enough to support you know, the best audio. Now I know that things like Netflix, for example, supports 5.1 Dolby Atmos, or excuse me, 5.1 home theater audio, but they also support Dolby Atmos in some of their movies too. But not only do you need the fastest Wi-Fi or a fast enough Wi-Fi to get the best audio and video, you also have to pay a premium, right? So if Netflix has a base pay, you get HD, right? Okay, 1080p, whatever. You have to pay for the premium version to get the 4K and get the Atmos. Not a lot of people are doing that either. For example, I have my home theater, of course, but I have a TV set up in the bedroom and in the living room, and I live with my girlfriend. We watch a lot of Zeus, we watch a lot of Hulu, we get on you know, Netflix every now and then, and she pays for the Netflix, but she's never gonna pay for the 4K. She's never gonna pay for the Atmos. She doesn't wanna pay that much money for a streaming service that we don't use all the time. And a lot of people out there are just like that. And that sucks for home theater because now not only are we losing physical discs, we're also falling to the wayside with streaming and what they don't provide us, which is you know, beautiful 4K image. Yes, they do 4K, but it's not the best. Yes, they do Dolby Atmos, but it's not the best, right? You only get the best out of physical disc or having something like a Kaleidoscape, something in that nature so that you can still get disc-like performance without the disc. And that's what's the problem with discs, is that people have to go out and get it and then put it in their Blu-ray player. Nobody wants to do that. They just wanna turn on the TV and have all of it at their leisure, which is kinda of why a Kaleidoscape is pretty cool. So that's one issue that I'm noticing. Like I said in the beginning, the point of a home theater is to get you know better audio and better visuals than you can going to a movie theater. What's the point of paying for a high-end home theater system building a dedicated space, buying a projector, getting a screen, buying home theater seats, getting a little popcorn machine. What's the point of it 
if you're going to only stream on your home theater. Yes, there's still a vast improvement over a TV. Yes, there's a vast improvement even over a sound bar. But for me personally, I feel like I've spent a lot of hard earned money on my home theater and the space that it's in that I feel like I'm doing myself a disjustice because I'm not using it to its full potential. I paid full money for it, but I'm only, you know, not, I'm getting maybe 70% of what it's capable of because I'm not feeding it, you know, the best information, the best sources. So for me, I still use physical disc until I fork up the money for some version of a Kaleidoscape. And then I do have movies at my fingertips where I can buy and, and download to a hard drive. I can watch any movie out there, which is really cool. Until then, I'm stuck buying physical disc. People out there nowadays don't want to do that. And I think that's what makes the home theater hobby in trouble. As we go through generations and things like this, we're in a weird generation right now. I'm 30 years old, so I look at the current generation we're in, like, what are we doing? So I'm not quite their generation, but I'm not quite you know ahead of them. That's hard to say. But the generation that we're in right now doesn't care about how good their TV looks doesn't care about HDR, HDR 10 plus, uh, Dolby Vision. They don't care about you know, IMAX Enhance, Dolby Atmos. They just want a decent sound and a decent picture to go with it. And I think that sucks for us in the home theater world because home theater is really cool. It's really cool to open a door and walk into a space that you made a movie theater and you have your movie posters, you have your popcorn, you have certain lighting that you set up, you have you know landscaping that you made to give it that home theater feeling. You're sitting in your home theater seats, they recline, they massage, they heat, they kick back. It's a really cool experience and people who aren't into home theater will also find it cool. I've brought a lot of people into my home who don't even know a thing about home theater who are like, man, this is awesome. I want this in my house. Yeah, it's cool when it's not yours and you don't have to put all the work into it, but when you do, you want the best out of it. And I feel like we're in a generation where home theater just almost doesn't make sense. It's almost a sound bar type of world now. A little sound bar, surround sound speakers underneath your TV, 75, 85 inch TV, does 4K, apps installed, boom, I am happy. That's what. I feel like that's kind of the generation I feel like we're in right now, where everything is right there at our fingertips, a press of a button. Home theater is not like that. So I kind of fear for home theater, not that it'll ever go away, because there will always be somebody behind us that likes home theater. And when I'm 70, 30 year old, be watching me, you know, and going back and seeing my old videos. So home theater will never go away. But we all laughed when sound bars came up and we were like, buying a sound bar it's not gonna do anything like my home theater while that's true I think we took a poll about who has a home theater and who has a sound bar I think the sound bars would triumph over the the people who have home theaters because it's just easier it's faster it's simpler it's usually one cable to your TV boom now you have a home theater in your living room you have a home theater in your bedroom and all you have to do is open one box put it down on the stand connect your subwoofer maybe some wireless speakers and you're done now you have way better audio than you did from your tv with minimal effort so i'm not worried yet i won't say that i'm worried about home theater i definitely think that it's in trouble and somehow we got to figure out how to make home theater as cool as you know a sound bar or just a regular old setup we got to figure out how to show people that this hobby is actually really cool. There's some really cool elements to it, even though it's a lot, there's a lot of speakers and there's a lot of terminology and there's a lot of wires and a lot of equipment, it's all worth it. So I don't know, when I have kids, I'm gonna have a home theater. They're probably gonna love it because it's gonna be a giant screen, they can play their games on it, it's gonna sound crazy, it's gonna get loud. I'll think, I think they'll like it because of that um, and maybe, if they follow my footsteps, they'll probably learn a thing or two and then have one in their homes or whatever the case is. But I just feel like we're in a weird generation where it's too, not complicated, but it's too involved for people to really get into it, which kind of sucks. So with that being said, leave me a comment down below. Let me know, do you think home theater is in trouble? Why or why not? Let me know that down below in the comment section. 
Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace.